It's still Tuesday, March 26, and we have some things to talk about. Disclaimers right now. This podcast is rated for a mature audience only. If you are under 18 years old, this content is not for you. Thank you for visiting us. There's plenty of other content on YouTube for you to watch. Have a great day. All content not created by the blue-haired bingo babe, that's me, belongs to its original creator. It is used to substantiate, augment, or exemplify this author's content. It is used under Title 17, Section 107 of U.S. Code, governing fair use for news, education, and critique. By now, most of you are aware that JLR has had a second confrontation by a different person. And this was an unprovoked, as far as I can tell, confrontation while JLR was sitting in his car. The person who confronted him claims to represent the United Cajun Navy. And JLR went on to explain his perception of the events. And we are going to look at both the United Cajun Navy and the nicknamed organization called the Cajun Navy, otherwise known as Cajun Relief Foundation Incorporated. This is the website for the United Cajun Navy, and I am doing a voiceover because my screen record did not record. So this could go sideways or it could be fine. All of a company's information should be on the front page, the most important information about us, who we are, how you can get involved, what the vital information you need to know, or links to it. As we scroll down, you'll see um, numbers for the various goods and services given and received, and those numbers were zeros when I loaded this website. Underneath it, as I scrolled down to see what was on the front page, I noticed a logo in the lower right corner, this green and white logo, and that takes you to GuideStar, a self-reporting agency that monitors charitable organizations. So let's look at that now and see what GuideStar has to say. This is the United Cajun Navy's um, designation. It's a silver designation as of 2018. It has their mission statement. The um, tax status is as reported from 2018. They have their employer identification number. That's appropriate. They have company information that is appropriate. And when we scroll down, we will see some more information. That right there that I'm pointing to is the tax identification for a 501c3 and there you see the information bubble that tells you that so they are a legit um, awarded 501c3 as of 2018 employer identification number as I said and some other information including Todd Terrell the founder Keep that name in mind. There's also a designation that they are a charity. There's their address and their um, information that's pulled from their website or they enter the information themselves. Here are some numbers that indicate what they have done as a result of donations in both cash and um, goods. Their accounting numbers are either 2020 or 2022. That's not as concerning as you might think because it takes some time for accounting to get all the numbers together and somebody has to, you know, put it up on this self-reporting agency and so forth. Here are some further drop downs with uh, goals and missions, but here is something concerning to me. 
To unlock financial insights, you have to pay for a subscription to this website. And then discussion about operations, the official title, the board of directors, the um, listed names on there are not the same as the founder name. Todd Terrell is the founder, but down here, the name is Christopher Terrell. And if his name is Christopher Todd Terrell, I don't know what I, the point I'm making is that it's important to always be consistent about the information. Again, to see with the leadership uh, information, you have to subscribe. And then finally, the um, highest paid employee information, again, you have to subscribe to this website in order for that to be divulged. There's some education and training information about the senior employees for United Cajun Navy and um, it's all there for you to read uh, links in the show notes as you know as I always do further down we have organization demographics talks about race and ethnicity gender identity and so forth and worthy of note, there are no women in the senior employees that we are publicly able to see. And then uh, other further demographic information. Now let's go to the Better Business Bureau listing for Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which is where the United Cajun Navy uh, reports that it is headquartered or located. This is the Better Business Bureau uh, website and we looked for the United Cajun Navy listing located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana and they are not evaluated. Um, I think, this is my opinion, that if you're going to run a 501c3 charitable service that your headquarters should be listed and evaluated by the Better Business Bureau and as you can see clearly the United Cajun Navy has not taken that step even though they have been around since 2018. Now let's go to another website that I use, one of two that I use for charitable watchdog checking. And that website is Charity Watchdog. As you can see, Charity Watchdog has no listing for United Cajun Navies. And unfortunately, sorry about that. This, I told you this could go sideways. At any rate, that to me is a red flag or at least troubling because if you're going to be a 501c3 charity website and you want public trust, it is imperative that as many independent watchdog agencies as possible have your listing and monitor your public face, your financials, your donations, where they go, all that kind of stuff. And United Cajun Navy has not taken that step. This is not, if I didn't say it before, this is not a self-reporting agency like GuideStar is. This is an agency that goes out and looks at your information once you request monitoring and accreditation. Now let's go and see what happened when we looked at Cajun Navy, otherwise known as Cajun Relief Foundation Incorporated. I want to be really super crystal clear here. The website you're looking at is the public face of and also a subdivision of the 
Cajun Relief Foundation Incorporated. And we'll see that in a few minutes when we scroll down. So we have confusion here, and my only goal is to clear it up. The first thing we see when we start scrolling is that same website where my cursor is on the lower right. The first one we looked at, and it is a gold star certification. And then this website gives the same type of information about who we are, what, what they do, and, you know, some a uh, little bit of crowing about their accomplishments, rightfully so. A volunteer section with volunteer videos. The Cajun Navy Ground Force has created five programs for swift intervention and sustained relief. And we're just going to name them off uh, right under this title. The first one is Safe Camp, and that is short for Swift Action Force Emergency Camp. And it's the sort of the HQ for any of their remote operations. The second one is community caretaking and that's where they uh, reach out to the community. The third one is data-driven remote team. And this is their overseas management branch when they help overseas. The next one is visual storytelling. Music to my ears. I like this guy already. So their idea is they're going to use the storytelling and timeline tools to be able to keep the public aware. And then finally, swift intervention training. So, you know, it's always good to have a training arm if you're going to have um, volunteers come and help you. And so these are, you know, big cards that will take you to, to each one of the five programs that we just talked about briefly. And then the next thing is a slide with testimonials. Always a good thing to have. Information on Rolling Fork Mississippi Tornado in 2023. And then below that is a media section. And let me tell you, this is impressive when you know what you're looking at on a website to have all of these media outlets featuring you. They have a mission statement. I prefer to have mission statements right up at the top. I know that people are looking for other parts of a website, um, but it's important to put your mission at the top, in my opinion. They also have a vision statement, which, you know, is fine lower down. They also have a scroll with their sponsors. Very good, um, very good thing to have on your front page. And then down at the bottom, Cajun Navy Ground Force is a DBA or doing business as Cajun Relief Foundation Incorporated, a 501c3 nonprofit, and there's their employer number. Your donation is tax deductible to the extent allowed by law. Fabulous to have on your front page. All right, let's do the same thing we did for United Cajun Navy. Let's look them up on the charitable websites. Here's the first one again, Cajun Relief Foundation Incorporated. And again, remember, this is a self-reporting site. You go in and put this information in. It is confirmed, but you're the one reporting this. They've got all the information that United Cajun Navy, Navy listed and a whole bunch more, as you will see, including the ability to look at the link 1090, uh, 10990 forms, which are tax documents. Here's the same thing with programs that we saw on the previous, but here's their financials. 
And again, 2022 breakdown, it takes a while. Just trust me, it takes a while. But this is great information. You don't have to subscribe to anything. Looks like their donations are down a little bit, but COVID, you know, affected everything. So right underneath that, we see liquidity in 2023, months of cash in 2022, and fringe rate I don't know what that means I should have looked closer in 2022 the point I'm making is that they are disclosing everything there's their liquidity um, what we were just talking about liquidity uh, months of cash in 2022 and fringe rate and then under that funding sources and assets and liabilities this is as good as it gets as far as transparency and financial disclosure, in my opinion. And this is the way it should be done when you are taking money out of the public's pocket as a free will donation. Same thing here, Cajun Relief Foundation, but they are, instead of listing just a couple of things, they're listing all the assets. And that that's just fabulous Robert Godet um, in my voiceover I read this little blurb to you and I love what he says here because as a narrator storyteller reporter whatever you want to call me he's using every tool he can get his hands on to make the public aware including social media and he is an advocate of using social media in these uh, relief efforts to the extent that they are pr appropriate. Sometimes they're not appropriate. We saw in the case of one of the tracking dogs um, from JLR's live stream, JLR stayed back. He didn't push forward and act like, you know, uh, an ambulance chaser. He stayed at a respectful distance to get his footage. Anyway, here's all about the officers and directors. You'll notice that there is a lady, and she is a member at large. I don't know what those duties entail. I didn't do that deep of research. But the fact that they have um, in their senior employees they have a lady is good news as far as I'm concerned while I'm thinking of it you'll notice that the officer listed as the founder is the same on the bottom as on the top where the um, CEO or director or founder is located it's Robert Godet and now let's do the same thing we did for um, United Cajun Navy. Let's look up the listing in the Baton Rouge, Louisiana um, Better Business Bureau and see what that website has to say. And unfortunately, I looked up both Cajun Navy Ground Force, which is that forward-facing website, and also Cajun Navy Relief Foundation, and there were no results. I would correct that if I were uh, this organization. Now let's go to the same website, the last one, Charity Watch, and unfortunately, Cajun Relief Foundation is not listed there either. And I find that um, a little disappointing because in my opinion, if you are running a charity, you should have an independent watchdog agency monitoring your um, business activity for the peace of mind of the public. All I have to do is say Summer Wells Reward Fund and people's brains melt. Even though every penny was accounted for and turned over to the reward fund at Civis Bank, now Thread Bank, and it went through the court system, nobody 
raised any objections or tried to claim their money. A year later, the funds were turned over to the Children's Advocacy Foundation, and they were thrilled to get it. Every penny that the public donated was turned over. All right, let me get off my soapbox. And now let me turn the corner just a little bit and bring some balance and some clarity to some other things that have been brought up. And for that, I'm going to Dutchie. This is Dutchie's live stream from last night and Truth and Transparency. I am only about halfway through it. So I cannot tell you all the things they covered, but what I can tell you is that she's still in touch with the Proudfoots. She has done a flyer for them. You see it on my community wall, and you saw it a day or two ago in one of my previous broadcasts. That's the information that is on it is the most accurate to the best of Katie Proudfoot's memory. Dutchie has extended the invitation to Katie and Chris to come on again if they so choose. She's also reiterated her standing invitation to Seth Rogers to come on and have a discussion about Sebastian and the search efforts and so forth anytime he wants she will work it out the best way she can. She also said that she would continue to work with both sides of the family at any time when they want a platform to talk about Sebastian, about searching, about the progress on the case. She is happy to do so. With regard to Chris and Katie specifically, not searching, um, their law enforcement discourages parents from searching in the initial days. And that is because your instinct is apparent if there is a recovery in process is to run and scoop up your child. And that is not helpful. It contaminates the search scene. And that is straight out of law enforcement's mouths. If you need a reference for that, I encourage you strongly to go to missingkids.org, go to the menu section that says get help, and find the publication, When Your Child is Missing, and read it. It is prominent in the uh, first 24-hour checklist that they want parents to be home. At least if they're, it's in the case of one parent was there and one parent wasn't, they want the parent who was at home to be at home because that's the last time typically that a child was seen. That's also uh, Another reason is that if law enforcement needs to reaccess the home, the yard, uh, outbuildings, if it's a larger property, what have you, they want uh, one of those parents to be there available whenever law enforcement deems it necessary to go and research. Now, that does not preclude either or both parents or any other family member from passing out flyers, from going to prayer vigils, to um, going to s organized searches, but not in the first two to three weeks because everything is fresh and raw. And as we have seen in Katie's case, she still three weeks later, or well, a month later now, has trouble maintaining her composure and the best is saved for last. I have it uh, right out of Dutchie's mouth. The blip billboards that the friends of Dutchie's channel have been funding on behalf of Sebastian 
um, would have ended today. Today would have been the last day. But I am happy to tell you that the billboards on behalf of Sebastian Rogers are fully funded for another month plus one day. Cheers to everybody who has been supportive of the Blip Billboard campaign, and that includes the Proudfoots, as they also have donated. Dutchie has extended the offer to Katie and Chris Proudfoot to assume control and management of the Blip Billboard account on behalf of Sebastian Rogers, if they would like to. She would like Seth Rogers to know she will set up and manage a campaign or set up a campaign and he can manage it as well. That's all the good news I have for you today. I've given you the information on the United Cajun Navy and the Cajun Navy. Make up your own mind and God bless you. I'll see you real soon.